Hi, my name is Josh, and I'm a watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, check this out. You can see with my box of G's in the background that we're still looking at the GBX 100. Now, I know if y'all watched my video, I said some good. I said a whole lot of bad. I hope I don't come across too negative. I definitely don't want to be, you know, negative Nelly, whatever, Debbie Downer. I don't want to be that. But I also want to tell you all the truth, right? I don't want to sit here and just blow smoke in hopes that you subscribe to my channel or buy something because somebody's paying me to advertise it for them. That's not what I want. But I also don't want to be Eeyore, right? I don't want to be Eeyore. But with that, what I want to do in this video is talk just about how this thing wears on the wrist. How it wears maybe bigger than the dimensions, say, in my opinion. How it compares to other G-Shocks. And so that you might be able to know if you have one of these other models, what it'll be like if you throw this GBX100 on your wrist. So, I mentioned in the other video, it is considerably larger than the regular G-Square. So 5600, I think 5610, it wears bigger. And what's funny is the dimensions aren't so different that you would think it would wear as differently as I think they do. When I put both of these on the wrist, they're so, so different. And I know they're different watches and I know that the GBX isn't a square, right? So for all of you really uh, helpful people that will remind me of that, I appreciate that. And, uh, and it's a good reminder to have because it's not a square. Even though it's part of the Glide series and even though they have these GLX modules and some of these other ones that are squares, right? I don't think this GBX is really a square. So I get that. But I think we're all going to compare it to a square. I think it's the first thing we do when we say compare it to a square. So here we go. You can see kind of the overall thickness, but just the overall band. I think that's one of the main reasons I guess I should point it out right there. That right there is one of the reasons that we're so big. That and the bezel. That's my opinion. So, but you can see I'm also holding up a, a normal rubber one. So let's see how it wears. I got two different metal ones. So this is that like ceramic composite metal one on a strap. But what I do is I wear one of these on my left wrist. Then I wear one of these on my right wrist. And then periodically I switch them back and forth just in case there's a difference in between my left and right wrist of sizing, which sometimes there is. But just to experience that to make sure that I'm kind of being fair in my comparisons. And so this one, I did it with that one and that was closer to size. So these metal G's well, on the band, here's one of my absolute favorites. Look at this blue. This blue, I still can't get over. It's the best looking blue that I've ever seen. Um, so, but yeah, so you get this metal case on a rubber strap. And now we're getting closer to the way that this GBX wears. So it's much larger than your standard 5600, 5610. We're getting close with the metal G's. Okay. And let's just hold up the stainless steel one so that you can see, because this does have a stainless steel bezel. Now it's brushed, right? So the biggest comparison is, and I'm just gonna throw you off before I switch sides, is the fact that that's brushed when the regular one is, well, that bezel's still brushed. The, the case and everything is polished. But when you start getting into the metal on metal, because these things are about the same widths, you start realizing, okay, now I'm getting to the size that they wear. And these metal G's on the metal bracelets definitely wear bigger than some of your other 5600, 5610s with the standard composite or polymer case and, and straps. So now we're getting close. And I will say, you know, it is nowhere near the size of like my Mudman, for example. Okay, so here's my Mudman. And it's nowhere near as thick. It's, it's nowhere near as big, right? So you don't have to worry about that. And I can hold it up to GSTB. Now, it wears about as thick as the GSTB, if I'm honest. But it definitely isn't as big. This GSTB is, oh, look at that. It just is huge. 
So it definitely doesn't wear that big. So if, you, if you're on the spectrum of all sizes of G-Shock watches, hopefully this gives you an idea of where this GBX fits. And for some of the folks, again, I talk about Goldilocks and that just right kind of thing. Maybe this GBX is just right for some. But here now is the one that I think it actually wears the most like the GA2100, AKA the Cassie Oak. I think it wears most like the GA2100. It's my personal opinion. On wrist, I felt that these really did feel the same way. Now, I will say this GBX band is still thicker than this. So I can try to take some measurements if I can get them here. Man, I'm getting behind the camera. I'm trying to get it right at the top because it's got a good taper. 25.5. 27. So it's a mil and a half, maybe two mil thicker at the meeting point right here where the case meets the band. And so that does make a difference. Again, think about what it's like to go from a 20 to a 22 mil strap or a 22 to a 24 mil strap. It wears bigger. And so this is what I think it wears most like. But when you set these side by side, you know, you want to talk about pros and cons on a watch. I can dog this GA2100 for days. It has so many cons. And I think this might just be a trend of what Casio is doing when they release these things. And it's like, oh, well, let's get it out to market. Let's not actually put all the functionality in it that G-Shock users want, are familiar with, and kind of accustomed to based on what we've been getting in all of these other amazing Casio watches. And let's just, yeah, let's just give them something. Now, if these two models are any idea or indicator of whether or not that matters in the market, it doesn't because these GA2100s are sold out. They're selling for premiums and all kinds of stuff. And honestly, neither one of them are anywhere near as good as some of these classics. My 5610 on the combi, but... You know, I, I don't know. Let me just say, like, these watches are nowhere near as good. They don't have solar. The lighting on this, here, let's turn this off. So the lighting on the GBX, so you see it's got a little bit of loom on those hands. Of course, there's no loom on the digital display. And I've shown you how well that brights up, right? It lights up great. You can read this one. If I can remember what light it is. Look at that. Look at that terrible one little LED. It barely lights up. It lights up the digital display. But if I have that set over to... Another thing, let's see, UTC, again, I don't use most of my watches, but if I don't have it set for the time and I have it set for the date instead, then it's going to show me that. And so I have the Casio Illuminator that's got two lights on here and I wear that to the movies because, you know, the movies are pitch black. I hit that thing, boom, it brights up. I can see the whole thing on an analog display. In fact, it's so bright, the movie theater we go to it serves food. It serves like full on three course meal dinner while you're watching the movie but you can't see because it's pitch black so sometimes you're reaching down you know you grab a french fry or something you don't even know where the ketchup is so i use my illuminator as a flashlight that's how awesome that cassio illuminator is but anyway let me get the lights back on i'm way off topic in this comparison you know this is supposed to be looking at the gbx and and you know what but maybe it's not that random maybe this is my recommendation why try to fetch down one of these two watches and pay way more than my $25 Casio Illuminator that I think has more pros to it in real life? Now, again, if you're going to use all the smartphone capabilities of the GBX, then you're in a whole nother league and you need to not watch my videos or take any of my advice seriously because I'm not covering all of that. I view all those things as cons. All that smartphone stuff, I view all of that as a giant con. If you look at my review, I tried to fiddle with this thing and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Thankfully, it finally reset itself back to the standard time or I wouldn't have known what to do with this watch. I'm old, but I'm not that old. It's just complicated. But if you like complicated and you're a techie, if you're young and you want to use all those features, then don't listen to me. Go get you a GBX. But in general, no, I wouldn't get either one of these watches in my hand. I'd go get a 5610 on a combi 
and then I'd go buy a Casio Illuminator for $25. That's what I would do. But, and make your decisions the way that you want to, right? As long as you ain't hurt nobody else. Enjoy your hobby. It's supposed to be fun. All right. We are going to call this one a wraps. Let me know if you have any questions. Drop them down in the comments below, and I will try to get back with you. And until we talk again, please remember what really matters. And that's not watches. Keeping insanity safe. Thank you.